Welcome! Today we're going to talk about my forge, talk about how I built it and uh, how you can too. Uh, this is the forge that I use when I do forging type projects. I am not a blacksmith, I am not an expert on forge design, uh, but I, like a lot of people, have you know gone online, looked around, found some plans, modified them and sort of made them my own. Um, you can build a forge similar to this one for probably under $100. So what I used as kind of the uh, the basis for my forge, as you probably already figured out, is a cheap grill. So this is something that I bought for you know, 20 $22, something like that, uh, at a store which shall remain nameless. Uh, this thing does not have real strong legs on it. The design that I used used a very, very light refractory material. Make sure that the forge you're building is built in such a way that it is not going to collapse. So uh, this pipe allows air in. That's one of the keys to making an effective forge. You have to get a lot of airflow uh, going through there. And this is what I use for a blower. Uh, this is obviously a hairdryer. This is something that I bought really, really cheap. I forget, maybe 11, 12 bucks, something like that. You can find them a little cheaper or a little bit more. Uh, this has two speeds, a low and a high. Uh, I found that that was not enough. And so I made a little, this is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty rough, but I made a, um, a little pipe using aluminum to connect my blow dryer. Let me make sure that you can see that. Okay, so to connect the blow dryer to the forge. And uh, you can see from me lifting this thing up that it obviously isn't very heavy. Okay, now I'm gonna take this blow dryer out of the way. I'm gonna show you more or less how this works. So I cut a whole bunch of holes in here and that's so that as air flows in, uh, I can control the amount of air that actually gets through into the forge itself. So if I back this thing way out here, I got a couple holes cut in the top of the pipe here. I got a whole bunch of holes in my, uh, in my connector. And so a lot of air is escaping before it even gets in to the forge. But if I want that thing to get real hot real fast, then I can slide this a little further down. And now, uh, you know, with the blow dryer in at this end, you know, I maybe only have a few of these holes that are open letting air out, so then a lot of air is getting down uh, into, the, into the, uh, the forge area itself. You can kind of see what this looks like inside. It's built up all around here on the edges. It comes down to this pipe, steel pipe. Never use galvanized for any part of this, but a, uh, a non-galvanized steel pipe. You start heating this thing up with a galvanized pipe and you're going to be having uh, all kinds of poisonous fumes coming off of it. Uh, anyway, so this is my steel pipe. Knocked a bunch of holes in there with the uh, with the drill, and this is just to maximize the amount of airflow that's going to be coming out into this area. So this material is what's called a refractory. There are a lot of different recipes online for how to use refractory cement plus uh, perlite, and I do have a bag of perlite over here that I'll grab. It's a crazy material. It has all kinds of different applications, uh, but one of them is in building. Uh, refractory materials. So, and actually there are recipes online for making your own fire bricks and a lot of them call for perlite and refractory cement. I'll link a couple of those below so you can go and check them out. Uh, I used a five gallon pail to, uh, to mix it up and I can tell you that you want to mix it thick enough uh, that you can actually, you know, you kind of mold it almost like a, like a clay. Let me turn this so you can see. So I cut a hole in the, sort of in the bottom of the grill uh, just at one end and then I ran this pipe through into there and I taped this up really good to make sure that as I was adding the refractory cement that I didn't wind up with uh, you know cement dripping out of there or whatever so I taped that up real good uh, so I ran that in there and then I just made sure that it was exposed uh, exposed well enough that I'd be able to get at it and drill holes and and, uh, and so on you know be, be aware that on rare occasions, if something happened that didn't go quite right in the mix, uh, there'll be a pocket of moisture in there someplace and it'll build up pressure and you know it can, can blow out the side. So you start with really, really low heat. Um, you know, maybe put some coals in there and light up the coals and just leave it alone. You know, walk away and let those coals burn and let them burn out, you know. And then a few hours later, you pile up more coals and you get those going. You let them burn out. And then maybe the next day, you throw some coals in there and you fire up the blow dryer. And get the thing running, get it, get it you know, started heating up, but keep your distance. Use some, you know, use goggles, use safety gear, uh, you know, big thick leather gloves and everything else. 
I use regular charcoal briquettes. I've also used hardwood, um, but charcoal works fine for the projects I've been doing. Uh, and then I will show you one last piece of this that some of you have, if you've been watching my other videos, you've seen me use this from time to time. Uh, this is welded together from just scraps of metal that I had, scraps of steel. I'll turn this on so you kind of see the way that fits on there. Uh, that, that just really contains the heat a little better and also makes it a little bit more vertical. And when you get a little taller like that, you'll get, you'll get a little bit more heat up in here than you might have a little lower down in a, in a shallower, uh, shallower uh, coal bed. And if I really want to get something hot, I'll use these fire bricks. Okay. And I'll build something like that. Sometimes I'll put like a little chimney in the back so some heat can escape this way. I'll just have flames pouring out the front or whatever. Um, so that, that's another way to you know, trap the heat even further. So there it is, the forge. That's my design. Uh, there are probably literally a thousand different designs on the web. Some of them people have videos, they walk you through the steps. Some of them people have blogged it uh, or whatever. Anyway, there are many, many, many different designs. But if you're like me, just build one that works and start there. <laughs> I, I knew for, I, I wanted to build a forge for probably three or four weeks before I really got down to business and did it. And uh, if anything, I wish I had gone sooner and gone ahead and built it. Because that first experience of being able to bring metal up to a temperature that you can actually forge something and banging away at it with the hammer and actually creating something with it. This was one of the very first projects I did. Uh, I made some tongs out of rebar. It's not as hard as you might think to get started. Um, so then sort of the other main part of the operation is of course my splendid anvil. I got this for $15 at Harbor Freight and it has worked fine. It, it jumps around a lot because it's not very heavy and I don't really have a good, very good base for it. But if I built a better base for it, uh, this would actually be a really good anvil. Uh, it's a little small, of course, but... Uh, and I have bought a replacement now that I'm going to get set up here at, at some point. But uh, all the projects I've done so far, I've done on this anvil and I've made a lot of cool stuff. So there's no reason you can't just start out small and see if you like it and see if to you it's worth making a bigger investment. Uh, and if you decide it is, then you know you go up from there. So if you have any interest yourself in this, I'd say absolutely give it a try. Build your own forge and uh, you know let me know how it goes. All right, thanks for joining me. We will see you next time.